always wish you luck for the day. Thank you so much for joining, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Dhanavat Pranam. This is Amrendra Das joining in from Atlanta, Georgia. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Please accept my humble obeisances. Always wish you luck for the day. So thank you so much for joining, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, can you please wait for a few seconds? Like we are doing introduction, then we will start recording, and you can start the class then. Absolutely, Mataji. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. So, is there anyone else who wants to introduce? Uh, yes, Mataji. The recording this has is started. This session so is no you. longer being recorded. Yes, Mataji, please go ahead for the introduction. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, this is Swapna from West Virginia. Dhanavat Pranams, Mataji. All the best to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Dhanavat Hare Pranam, Krishna. all the best to Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev. Thank you so much for joining, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to assemble devotees here. This is Nina from Naperville, Chicago. Hare Krishna, Nina Mataji, then what the name of the Rishri Shrila Prabhupada and Gurudev. Thank you so much for joining, Mataji. Hare Krishna, then with Pranam, this is Shraddha from Shalom. Hare Krishna, Mataji, then what the name of the Rishri Shrila Prabhupada and Gurudev. Thank you so much for joining, Mataji. Can we start the recording, recording has started. So welcome to Bhakti Sangha Jabba okay. Conference Call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Grace Amrinda Prabhu to enlighten us on the glories of Sri Sita Devi. So thank you so much Prabhuji for giving your valuable association and time. So now I would like to hand over the call to you Prabhuji. Thank you so much Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you so much for kindly having me over this call this morning. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Dhyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Hakadama Hiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guroho Shri Yutapta Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagra Jatam Sahagana Ravunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sinho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamani Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Karun Hesha Kripa Sinho Evacha Paditanam Pavani Kiho Vaishna Vitho Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunya Vadi Pashati Veshatarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Sri Advaita Gadada Srivata Di Gauru Bhakta Dinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Shri Ram Ram Ghunandan Ram Ram Shri Ram Ram Bharatadrija Ram Ram Shri Ram Ram Ranakar Kasha Ram Ram Shri Ram Ram Sharanam Dhava Ram Ram Mata Ramo Matpita Ram Chandra Swami Ramo Matsakha Ram Chandra Sarva Swami Ram Chandra Dayanu Nanyam jane nanyma jane na jane Ramo raja mani sada vijayate ramam ramesham bhaje Rame na bhikata nisha chara chamo ramaya tasmai namaha Rama nasti parayanam parataram rama sedasu smiham Rame chittanaya sada bhavatume bho rama mamutha Loka bhi ramam radaranga dhiram raji vanitram raguvan shanatam Karunya rupam karuna karantam shri rama chandram sharanam prapadhi Shri Rama Rama Rame Ti Rame Rame Manu Rame 
सहस्रनाम तत्ल्यम राम नाम बराण मुकम करोति वाचालम पंघुम लंघयते वीरं यत् कृपा तमहं वन्दे श्री गुरुं दीनतारणं परमानंद माधव कृष्ण चैतन्य ईश्वर हरे कृष्ण डियर डिवोटीज थैंक यू फॉर काइंडली एंगेजिंग मी इन द सर्विस ऑफ द वैष्णवस ऑन दिस मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस होली अपीयरेंस डे ऑफ मदर सीता आई फील अटरली अनक्वालिफाइड टू शेयर माय थॉट्स बिकॉज Uh, I don't have uh, enough sufficient um, either realization or experience or or even study of the shastra knowledge um, through transcendental knowledge through the parampara. I have not invested enough time in studying the Ramayana. I don't know anything about uh, Sri Ramachandra's personality and Sri Ramachandra's beautiful pastimes. Uh, great sages like Narada Muni and Shukadev Goswami and Vyasadev and Lord Shiva are completely qualified to speak about Sita and Ram. And even in human society, uh, greatly enlightened beings who are practicing Rama Bhakti all their lives and who are very sincere in their practice, who are uh, very attached to the lotus feet of Sita and Ram without any duplicity. who have served their guru very systematically who have chanted the holy names and lived their life with proper rules and regulations of sadhana bhakti who have studied the shastra meticulously and who have very deep attachment to the lotus feet of sita and ram when they speak uh, there will be devotion invoked in the heart of the listeners but i don't uh, very honestly uh, i fold my palms in front of the assembled vaishnavas uh, i have not spent enough time studying the ramayana um i don't uh, i have not worshiped sita and ram with all my heart i have not served my guru with uh, with honesty i have not chanted the holy names and taken shelter of this process of bhakti with sincerity uh, but still i am being uh, very proud and very audacious this morning on the appearance of mother sita uh, to speak some ram katha so please forgive me uh, if i if i if i speak things which are um not properly presented very poorly um material perspective or spiritual perspective very poorly um presented please kindly forgive me um i must invest more time in in my personal uh, sad sadhana and swadhyay but it is said in the shastra that uh, the the ganga and the yamuna are so pure that whether a demigod bathes in them or whether a rat bathes in them um ganga and yamuna have the power to purify the living being irrespective of the the position of the living being because the power is in the in the in the bathing of ganga and yamuna similarly ram katha is like the flow of unlimited nectar so a rat like me can also take the advantage that um i am impure but that means there is more need for me to jump into the pure waters so with that uh, with that intention that maybe with more time to come by speaking and hearing and sharing and remembering these pastimes uh, i may uh, try to make more sincere attempt to make spiritual advancement with this desire i am trying to speak so devotees in their conference call may kindly forgive me if uh, i am not uh, i am not speaking properly hari uh, krishna prabhu ji yes mata ji hi uh, prabhu ji can you come closer because some uh, people are complaining that your voice is low so if if you have he- headphones that would be nice yes mata ji i'll i'll just a minute Hare Krishna, is it better now? Yes, Prabhu ji. Okay. So, Hare Krishna. So, um, I have just put on the earphones. I wish and pray that now maybe the sound quality is better. So I pray to all the devotees assembled here. Please kindly pray for me, so that I can speak properly. Shri Ram Katha is certainly very sweet, 
and the example uh, given by the great souls is that uh, of a, of a medicine pill sometimes we see that there are some medicines which are in the taste of a mango fruit or they taste like uh, orange or they taste like uh, some tasty strawberry fruit uh, why do they do that why is it that some medicines are tasting some syrups are also like that very tasty and some pills are also like that so why is it like that it's because the medicine may be bitter but if the taste is uh, more uh, attractive then kids will readily take it those who are uh, frivolous children who are not interested in uh, taking the medicine they will happily take it because of the taste similarly the instructions uh, in the ramayan are uh, very very in, are, are very very important and they are to be taken with a utmost uh, urgency but they are like bitter pills because they give us instructions of how to be and how not to be so sometimes as frivolous children we may be very mischievous and we may be disinterested in taking them so therefore great souls like valmiki muni and other acharyas who have commented on the ramayan uh, what they do is they string it together uh, <coughs> string these instructions together in the form of a very beautiful wonderful epic storyline so that we uh, frivolous mischievous children uh, may be very attracted to the mango fruit like taste of the storyline and in that result we will take this medicine and the medicine will go inside and help us uh, cure our material conditioning so we don't take a pill or we don't drink a, a, a syrup because of its taste like i want to eat a fruit i want to eat mango uh, so let me just go and have a medicine that we don't do uh, but we but we but we take uh, the medicine when we see that uh, we are diseased so therefore when we come to the ramayan with this desire that oh i want to be entertained by some story so i may as well be entertained as ram with ram story uh, that is not first class first class is when we understand that we have some illness we have some fever we have some disease uh, and then we need a medicine and then of course we need a medicine which is very tasty Uh, to the tongue so similarly first step is to identify that i have shortcomings on the path of spiritual life and therefore i need these instructive uh, medicines uh, but but preferably so when it's given in the vedanta sutra they are direct um, instructions and they may be little difficult to handle very heavy to accept but when they are strung together in a story line like that of the ramayana then they become very palatable by the taste that they offer to the ear the taste that they offer to the mind and the enlightenment that they offer to the heart so these stories of the ramayana they bring in um, entertainment to the ear these instructions bring in enlightenment uh, or rather enrichment to the mind and when practiced they bring enlightenment or realization to the heart so in this way uh, this is uh, the glory of this very wonderful text uh, of the ramayana now the ramayan <clears throat> can also be called a sita yana why because this is as much as the story of mother sita as much as shri ram valmiki muni when he calls the ramayan he also describes it as sita yaha charitam that this is not just the story of shri ram this is actually uh, the story of mother sita that is where the uh, the ram katha takes twists and turns with the presence of mother sita and the lessons that mother sita teaches us uh, that is where uh, this uh, ramayan uh, takes so many beautiful wonderful transcendental turns but having said that it is not just the story of sita and ram the supreme lord shri ram is bhagavan and mother sita is uh, shakti ram is shakti man and mother sita is shakti shri ram is energetic and mother sita is the energy but it is also the story of the person who is bringing the energy to the energetic the lost energy to the uh, grieving energetic and that is hanuman so it is interesting that ravana wanted to take sita away from ram he wanted to take the energy away from the energetic and surpanaka wanted to take ram away from mother sita 
she wanted to take the energetic away from the energy but however hanuman did not want to take one away from the other hanuman wanted to bring sita and ram together so this is the difference between the mentality of an enjoyer and the mentality of the enjoyed devotee surupanakha who wants to take ram away from the energy represents a spiritual practitioner who wants to separate all the energies of the lord away from him and to illustrate this shila prabhupad gives a very beautiful example prabhupad explains that if there is money which is lost there is someone who has lost their wealth and some valuable bills are found on the street so there could be three responses for an onlooker the passer by can see that there is some money fallen on the street they could either be like surupanakha which means this money does not belong to me therefore i just walk past what does that mean the money here represents sita and the the person who has lost the money represents ram so he is the shakti man and the wealth is shakti so surupanakha represents neglecting or disregarding the shakti and just approaching the shakti man so when someone walks past some other person's wealth saying that this doesn't belong to me and i don't care this is the mentality of surupanakha however the second onlooker the second passer by would have the mentality that no one is watching therefore i may as well steal this wealth so that is the mentality of ravana where he doesn't see the presence of ram but wants to kidnap the wealth mother sita however the best response would be a person who is walking past and he sees this wealth and he picks up this wealth and announces is there a person who has lost his money and if there's a person who puts his hand up with sincerity then giving these bills back to the person who has lost it this is the best response explains shrila prabhupada so therefore hanuman represents um uh, the devotee who is taking so much hardship and he's taking so much effort in crossing the ocean and fighting the demons and being bound up um in lanka only to take the message of ram to mother sita and bring the message of sita back to shri ram and finally unite them so therefore this ramayan is not just the story of ram or not just the story of sita and ram but this is the story of ram as the energetic sita as the energy and hanuman as the devotee who brings the energy close to the energetic in this world sometimes there may be devotees who may think oh this is material attachment or oh, that is material attachment or oh, this is material or oh, this is material give up all of this to become krishna conscious that is the mentality that i want only ram without sita that is surupanakha like mentality where we we are more detachment oriented than attachment we want the supreme lord but we don't want to accept any of his expansions in this world in the form of the energy while the sense gratifiers are like ravan where they don't regard god they don't regard the presence of ram but they are busy enjoying the sita of this material world but the hanuman like devotee he lives in this world and sees every aspect in life as mother sita mother sita is not simply a person found in the pages of the ramayan mother sita is actually the uh, the presence of the material energy in the world that he live in every single thing is an expansion of mother sita having a pencil is an expansion of mother sita mm-hmm. buying a notebook is the expansion of mother sita having a car is an expansion of mother sita anything that we have in this world which we have received in this world is an expansion ultimately of mother sita and hanuman like mentality means taking all of these objects and using it only for the pleasure of shri ram taking the separated mother sita and bringing her close to shri ram so in this way rupa goswami has described anasaktasya vishayan yathartham upayunjatah nirbandha krishna sambandhe yukta vairagya muchyate that yukta vairagya means proper renunciation means um, first of all to be uh, very Uh, simple in one's mindset to take things which are of utmost need and not to reject everything but to use them completely in the service of shri ram this is proper renunciation so if there is shri la prabhupad 
who is in a car that has been offered by his disciples. And there is a reporter who's asking Prabhupada, oh, you're supposed to be guru, why are you sitting in these cars? But then the response is worth noting. Prabhupada mentions that, <clears throat> why car? Actually, I should have a golden chariot because I'm carrying the message of Sri Ram, Sri Krishna. I'm spreading Krishna consciousness. And being the servant of Sri Ram, uh, this car is actually an offense, right? So the reporter is thinking that the sadhu must walk from one place to another without accepting the sita of this world. But Prabhupada, like Hanuman, is not just jump, jumping the ocean across, but he's also using whatever comes his way, arranged by Sri Krishna, only and only for the pleasure of Sri Ram. So this is seeing Mother Sita in real life and developing the mentality of Hanuman. Now in this month, we don't just celebrate Sita Navami. We started off with Ram Navami and in the middle we celebrated Hanuman Jayanti and now we are celebrating Sita Navami. To mean that this is the devotee, even as far as Tithis are concerned, Hanuman as the Tithi is there between Sita and Ram, always working to bringing them together. So therefore, today, we will not just speak just about Mother Sita and separate her in our discussion, but we will try to glorify Hanuman also because we had Hanuman Jayanti recently and uh, I, I have not purified my tongue by speaking enough about Hanuman. So I would like to take this uh, situation, uh, this um, circumstance of this morning Harikatha arranged by the Supreme Lord uh, to take um, this opportunity to speak about Hanuman and Mother Sita and the section of the Ramayana which deals with Ram in separation, Mother Sita in separation, and Hanuman working as a servant is the Sundar Kand. We know there are seven sections of the Ramayana, starting with Bal Kand, and then Ayodhya Kand, Aranya Kand, Kishkinda Kand, Sundar Kand, Lanka or Yuddha Kand, and then Uttar Kand. But in the Sundar Kand, we see very beautiful description of Hanuman going across, uh, going across all boundaries, fighting all the demons entering Lanka and finding Mother Sita to give the ring of Sri Ram and taking the message of Mother Sita across. So <clears throat> this Sundar Kand is called Sundar Kand because the word Sundara means beauty. So who is beautiful here? It is described that Hanuman's form is very beautiful. Atulita baladhamam hema shailabhadeham Hanuman has Atulita Baladhamam. He is the abode of unlimited strength. And Hema Shailabhadeham. His form is like that of a very big, humongously large golden mountain. And Danuja Vanakrushanum. He is like forest fire, just like forest fire burns the snakes to ashes. The birds can fly and the big, big animals, like the, the, the animals which can jump across, they can try their bit to ex escape the forest fire and jump over. But the snakes neither can jump, nor can they run, neither can they fly. So they can just crawl and therefore they are burnt to ashes. So. If Hanuman is like a forest fire, the snakes represent Asuras. So Danuja Vanakrishanu, if they, they, the Rakshasa like snakes are burned to ashes by the forest fire called Hanuman. And Jnanina Magraganyam, he is not working, although he looks like a Vanara. He is in the form of a monkey. He is Jnanina Magraganyam. He is the best among the knowledgeable transcendentalists. Sakala Guna Nidhanam. He is the source of all good qualities. Vanaranam Adhisham. He is the king of all the monkeys. But most importantly, Raghupati Priya Bhaktam. He is the best devotee of Sri Ram. Vata Jatam Namami. I bow down to he who appears uh, as the son of Vayudev, as Pavanaputra or Maruti. Maruta means the wind and Maruti means the son of the wind god. He is Pavanaputra. Vayu Putra, the son of the wind god. So in this way, uh, Hanuman is very, very beautiful physically. And because he is the central theme of this section, this is called Sundarakanda. It is also called Sundarakanda 
because what is sundar ultimately what is beauty actual beauty is the beauty of the heart and in the beauty of the heart as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu teaches us greatest love can be seen in separation when radha and krishna are together could together in vrindavan it is certainly glorious but bhaktivino thakur says given a chance i will give up my body in kurukshetra not in vrindavan why because in kurukshetra there was meeting of radha and krishna after 100 years of separation from vrindavan in vrindavan there is always union radha and krishna are always together but after krishna left vrindavan and went to mathura and became dwarka dish the king of dwarka ultimately when krishna came to kurukshetra for having a sacred bath during the solar eclipse and the brajbasis also came there there was meeting after 100 years of separation shri bhaktivinoda thakur mahashay says i would prefer to give up my body in kurukshetra than in vrindavan because there is union after separation similarly in the sundar kand there is union of messages after separation the separation of sita and ram seems like many many ages have passed yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha pravrshaitam shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda virahe namah same principle of the shikshashtakam that one moment nimesha seems like yuga like a whole millennium has passed so similarly because there is union there is meeting uh, through messages through a messenger called hanuman after separation and that is the most sweetest part of love of, of godhead therefore this section is called sundara also it is called sundara because wherever there is meeting of the energy and the energetic it is beautiful when sita and ram get married at that time also um, uh, adi kavi valmiki muni has used the word sundara because sita is coming close to ram through the marriage so similarly here mother sita is coming close to shri ram and therefore again the word sundara is very befitting so i want to start the narration from the point where jambavan he uh, encourages and he uh, inspires and empowers hanuman on this journey to cross the ocean and then we will have a very speedy uh, discussion going towards hanuman's entrance into ashok patika so jambavan he as we know we would not rewind to get to this point but jambavan he inspires hanuman by reviving his memory we know hanuman was uh, supremely supremely powerful after swallowing the sun and being attacked by the thunderbolt of indra we know when vayudev the father of hanuman he took all the wind back because that's his department and when he saw his son being struck by the thunderbolt of indra uh, vayudev became very very angry so to retaliate to this point he took all the wind away and when the demigods were struggling uh, because of lack of oxygen or oh, vayu um, they begged at the feet of vayudev and then vayudev said yes you must empower my son and protect him and give your blessings and in that way um, everyone blessed hanuman and hanuman literally means one with a cracked chin so hanuman because he was very empowered right from childhood very powerful and now he also got benedictions from the demigods as a little child he became very mischievous he became very mischievous, he became very mischievous. and uh, the sages had to uh, had to curtail hanuman's mischief by making him forget his prowess his powers because hanuman as a child he would tie the beard of the sages together who were meditating and sometimes he would run away with their cloth and sometimes he would uh, go under water and pull their feet while they're chanting gayatri in a sacred water standing knee deep or hip deep so hanuman was um, you know protected by the sages uh, with forgetfulness of his prowess but at this point jambavan he remind he reminds hanuman of his prowess and revives the the power potency of hanuman so this is a very very instructive point for us as sadhakas that jambavan doesn't become the hero of the story hanuman becomes the hero of the story jambavan also can jump across the ocean 
But Jango one says that if I jump, I have the the potency to jump across, but I am too weak. I can't come back. But Hanuman, you can jump across the ocean, find Mother Sita, and you have the power to come back. So Jambavan is not the hero. Hanuman becomes the hero. But Jambavan is teaching us this principle that we must see what is ultimately good for the service of Sri Ram, and not about who gets the credit. Often times we first think about who is going to get the credit, and if it's going to be me, uh, then I will uh, do the needful. But if it is going to be someone else, then why should I help? often times that is the mentality uh, because of presence of envy in the heart but jambavan is teaching us here uh, to be selfless to become like salt to add taste to the preparation still become invisible in appearance we often times act like the sages what we do is if we see an ability in someone we see hanuman like ability in someone we try our best so that the person Uh, forgets his ability that is the sage mentality but we should learn to be like jambavan where when we see good in someone we are ready to empower them and remind them and motivate them of what they are capable of in the service of shri ram so hanuman gets empowered and there are four things mentioned by the acharyas hanuman becomes very very happy first of all on getting this service very happy he is not seeing the service as burden on his head second hanuman fasts completely as far as eating is concerned in austerity you see hanuman doesn't eat anything until he finds mother sita after finding mother sita uh, he jumps on and eats a few fruits in in the in the ashok one but before that he has not eaten so that shows us point number 1 we should be very very happy when service comes on our shoulder through our superior second we should be very very austere in our eating bhala na khai be ara bhala na pari be which means we should think that am i overeating is it actually needed am i eating it for the belly because i am hungry or am i eating it for the tongue because it's very uh, tasty so hanuman is teaching us that of course i am not following all this but i am just pointing these points out so that by speaking it aloud i may uh, take this principle seriously and even if i don't take it seriously if someone on the call takes it seriously at least the message of the shastra is valued uh, more uh, in this regard so that is the second thing the third thing is hanuman is not thinking that oh i am better than others so i don't need anybody's blessings hanuman walks around offering obeisances to all the monkeys to everyone and uh, begs for their blessings and prayers and finally fourth hanuman carries the lotus feet of ram in his heart and he is um, carrying the name of shri ram in the form of the ring in his mouth so it's an interesting point actually <coughs> hanuman is carrying uh, <coughs> the ring uh, on on his tongue so if the if hanuman would have considered the ring to be a ring he would have probably put it in his finger or he would have kept it on his head but while flying hanuman holds the ring on his tongue why because the ring is non different from the holy name of ram if hanuman would have swallowed the ring that shows so there are two mentalities hanuman could have done either he could have spit the ring out or he could have swallowed the ring in so but hanuman is teaching us a very interesting lesson this ring represents hari naam it represents the name of shri ram so therefore when our spiritual master gives us the name to chant there are two mentalities we can have one is to reject the process of chanting or not or to not chant sufficiently that is like spitting the ring out when shri guru gives us the beads and we just chant a few rounds and keep the bead starving <coughs> the beads and the bead bag are kept to starve starvation that is like tasting the ring little and spitting the ring out but on the other hand the other mentality which is unfavorable is to swallow the ring inside which means to have the mentality of enjoying the position of being the disciple of a certain guru so either one could be a guru tyagi in rejecting the process of chanting hari naam and spitting the ring out or one could be a guru bhogi and swallow the ring inside to show that i will take advantage of the position of being the disciple of a certain guru 
because I have this position, I can exploit it. But Hanuman is neither spitting the ring out, nor is he swallowing the ring out. He's holding it on his tongue to show us that whenever we have to perform any service for the Supreme Lord, there must be five things involved. One, we must have the empowerment of a great soul like Jambava. We should not independently, frivolously start any service on our own. It is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita also, Kale na Vrinda Vana Keli Vartam, Lupte Titam Kyapaitum Vishesha, Kripam Ritena Abhishesha Deva, Tatraiva Rupam Cha Sanatanam Cha. Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami did not frivolously start serving. They were empowered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, instructed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not even go to Vrindavan. He went up to Ramakeli, delivered Rupa Goswami and uh, accepted Rupa Goswami to his lotus feet and came back to empower and show the world that he who is going to do service in Vrindavan, he is going to be first empowered by me. So therefore, first, Hanuman is being empowered. Second, he is very happy to get that service. Three, he is very austere in his eating, sleeping, dressing, life, livelihood and his lifestyle. Fourth, he is very humble to offer obeisances to everyone and beg for their blessings. And fifth, Hanuman takes the feet of Sri Ram in his heart and the name of Sri Ram on his tongue and then he takes off. When Hanuman takes off, it is described he climbs onto a mountain and when he literally propels, the mountain uh, moves down to Patala because Hanuman has jumped with so much intensity. This shows how determined a devotee should be that a mountain may come in front of us in the form of so the mountain that Hanuman climbed up on represents the mountain of uncertainty. Will I be successful in my service? But Hanuman doesn't even see the mountain or consider the mountain or stand and see the dimensions of the mountain. He just jumps on top of the mountain. And with his feet, as he propels himself into the air, the mountain gets kicked down to show that a devotee who is determined, he will climb up the mountain of uncertainty and with his determination, push that mountain down to Patal, where the existence of the mountain is dissolved. As Hanuman hits mid-air, he almost looks like the infallible arrow of Sri Ram. So why is he compared to the arrow of Sri Ram? Because a devotee who is on service, he is, uh, he is in service, or he is on guard with determination, he is like, he carries the arrow, the qualities of the arrow of Sri Ram. What is the quality of the arrow of Sri Ram? It is unfailing. Unfailing. It never misses its target. So pure devotees are like that. They, they are unfailing. The Supreme Lord Sri Ram is Achyuta. He is infallible. His arrows are also Achyuta. And pure devotees who are the representatives of those arrows, they are also Achyuta. One, they never miss their target. Second, they never get distracted. The arrow of Sri Ram when shot, it doesn't go left, right, center and then hit the target. Similarly, pure devotees, they never get distracted on their path. And third and most important, the arrow is not thinking, I am the doer. The arrow always thinks that Ram is the doer and I am simply an instrument. Similarly, pure devotees, they are like Ram Bhatt. They are always aware of this fact that I am insignificant. And it is actually Sri Ram who is um, doing the needful. So in this way, Hanuman, who is very big and very, very strong as he is in the air, he uh, looks like the unfailing arrow of Sri Ram. Going ahead, it has been described that three uh, interesting uh, speed breakers come on the path of Hanuman, which Hanuman very successfully uh, he breezes through. The first speed breaker, the first test, so to speak, is Mainak, who is in the form of a mountain, and he is offering this uh, temptation to Hanuman that you seem to be very tired. Why don't you drink water of the ocean and rest in my cave for some time? But Hanuman, he doesn't reject this proposal and he doesn't accept this proposal. What does this teach us? When we start serving Sri Ram in the mood of Hanuman, the first thing that happens are temptations in this world. People come like Mainak Parvat, offering us different gifts and luxurious, opulent 
uh, temptations like please come to my home and stay in my home or please take this gift or please uh, take this offering hmm? this is just normal and natural anyone who starts serving the supreme lord shri ram uh, the the first person who comes is mainak uh, the the person who comes to offer some allurement some uh, in a, in a very sincere way to offer some temptation please rest for some time you seem to be very tired etc but hanuman he doesn't reject mainak which means he doesn't the devotee is not offending the invite the invitation at the same time hanuman is not busy sleeping in the cave and forgetting mother sita so the devotee is not so absorbed in the luxurious opulent tempting invitations that he forgets his preaching mission or forgets his service to shri ram what does hanuman do he touches the mainak with his hand offers obeisances and says now i am on my way to uh, finding mother sita without serving shri ram how can i have any rest so this shows us that we must be very uh, sincere on our path of serving shri ram shila prabhupad had this god brother very very glorious very very exalted very very inspiring and supremely elevated uh, shila akinjan krishnadas baba ji maharaj uh, <clears throat> akinjan krishnadas baba ji maharaj was a baba ji he was renounced in this world and one man came to akinjan krishnadas baba ji maharaj and offered him uh, a very wonderful shawl because he said that the winters in brindavan uh, can be very cold so you please kindly take the shawl and you Uh, protect yourself akinchan krishnadas baba ji maharaj saw this as mainak and what did he do he did not accept it he did not reject it but he took that shawl in his hand and he said yes i am very grateful that you have given me this shawl i accept this shawl and i can keep the shawl anywhere in my house your house is like my house so i would like to keep the shawl with you in your house whenever i need it i will take it and he never took it which means he didn't accept it he didn't reject it he accepted it and placed it in the man's home so similarly hanuman he he placed his lotus hands on mainak and he said when i am back at that time i can consider but for now i have to find mother sita the second person that hanuman sees is surasa now surasa <clears throat> appears in the form of a sea monster and she tells hanuman that i have this benediction or i have this um, blessing from brahma that anyone who crosses the ocean they can actually uh, become your food they can enter your mouth so surasa she one that <clears throat> oh hanuman you please kindly enter my mouth and become my food hmm? you are crossing over the ocean so you please kindly enter my mouth so it's interesting that hanuman is so determined and focused on his path that he cannot accept this and he cannot reject this so what does he do surasa becomes very big to sw- to almost swallow hanuman down her throat but hanuman also becomes very big surasa becomes twice hanuman size and hanuman becomes twice the size of surasa this goes on for some time and then finally when surasa is very big hanuman becomes very small like a mosquito enters her mouth and exits comes out and tells her oh mother um you wanted me to enter your mouth but you did not say not to leave so i have entered your mouth and i have exited now you please bless me on my path surasa becomes very very happy she blesses hanuman for his intellect and for his uh, very wonderful respectful nature she blesses him that may you succeed on your path so what does surasa represent surasa surasa represents the society of competition where we are so interested in showing off to others our skills and our ability that we are always busy opening our mouth and redoubling our uh, form just to show others that we are bigger than what we actually are so hanuman is teaching us in in a society of competition and show off mentality if that person becomes double and we become double and they become double and we become double we are just showing off how much opulence or how much skill we have Uh, there is no way of succeeding there the only way to succeed is to become very small and humble in that way we can enter the mouth of competition yet exit without dying because we all live in very hard core uh, cutthroat corporate competition 
with uh, so much backstabbing going on and in a, in, a, in a culture or in a society where it is filled with showing off uh, our promise in, in whether it's finances, whether it's uh, intellect, whether it is, mm, you know, so many other things. Uh, <clears throat> so ability and skills and talent. Hanuman is teaching us those who hum, become humble, humble themselves, they can enter this competition mouth of Surasa and yet at the same time exit without uh, uh, being killed. The third person whom Hanuman has to encounter is Simhika. And Simhika is an interesting person. Simhika can hold on to any bird who's flying above the ocean on the power of their shadow. When the bird is flying over the ocean, there is a shadow which is formed on the surface. And Simhika holds on to that shadow and stops the bird from, from flying. The same thing happens to Hanuman even. <coughs> Simhika tries to hold on to the shadow of Hanuman. But Hanuman tears Simhika to pieces. What does this represent? Simhika represents envy. And envious mentality means whether some, when someone is flying in the sky like a bird, instead of seeing their flapping wings and their ability to do better than us, uh, we are busy holding on to their faults, which are represented by the shadow. So an envious person is always busy holding on to the shadow-like faults of others. And instead of appreciating their flying ability, he is busy to pull them down. So Hanuman is teaching us, Kama Krishnarpane Krodha Bhakta Dveshi Jane. Narottam Das Thakur has sung, if one has lust, one can use that in Krishna's service by begetting Krishna conscious children. One has anger, one can use that in Krishna's service by getting angry at those who criticize the devotees. Uh, Lobha, one can use greed in one's life by becoming greedy to chant the holy name, to hear about Krishna. Vichayani, Vicharyani, Vichayani, Puna, Punaha, Kripanasya, Dhanani, Vatvan, Navani, Bhavantume. In the Padyavali, it has been described that true greed means may I hear and sing the names of Krishna and collect these names more and more and more and more. Just like a miser thinks for money, a devotee must think for the holy name. So Narottam Das Thakur has said that lust, anger and greed can be properly utilized and employed in the service of the Lord. But envy cannot be used in the service of the Lord. Therefore, Hanuman is teaching us Whenever there is envious simhika present in our life, the only way to deal with that envy is to tear it apart by glorifying the person whom we are envious of, by serving the person whom we are envious of, by quoting the glories of that person and, and, uh, and humbly, honestly accepting that these are the, the good qualities of the person. By publicly doing that and serving that devotee, uh, the envy can be torn to pieces. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna that you are qualified to listen to the Bhagavad Gita because you are non-envious. Even in the Bhagavatam, Dharmaha Projita Kaitavotra Paramo Nir Matsaranam Satam. That Bhagavatam is the literature which is meant, which is this book, this literature, this transcendental knowledge is meant for those who are non-envious. So it's very, very important that we work on this inner Simhika and therefore Hanuman teaches us by Tearing Simhika to pieces. So now as the story continues, it is described that after Hanuman crosses through uh, Mainak, Surasa and Simhika, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> then the description continues that Hanuman, he crosses the ocean and after he crosses the ocean, he comes to a place which is a, a very beautiful garden. It is filled with trees, filled with fruits, flowers, there are nice birds, nice animals in groups, and there are bumblebees, and there are ma tall uh, shaila, which means mountains. And Hanuman at that time, he climbs on to one of these mountains in the beautiful garden, and he looks over, and he can see with ocean on four sides, in the middle is Suvarna Lanka. So Hanuman sees the beauty of Lanka, and in fact, the Acharyas have described how Lanka is made, the city is made out of gold with Vichitra Mani Krit, which means it is filled with so many jewels and pearls and rubies and emeralds and all of these studs. And the homes are also very, very beautiful. 
there are streets which are decorated very beautifully there are big chariots there are elephants there are horses and so many different troops and groups of soldiers guarding on all directions but they are all rakshasas their descriptions have been given and hanuman is seeing through all of this he is seeing how this whole city is uh, so opulent also hanuman he can see that it is filled with forests and many gardens many groves uh, many small small uh, gro- small small gardens vana and upavana as described there are many ponds many caves and <clears throat> so many beautiful things have been mentioned here where there are humans there are demigods there are gandharvas everyone present in this city it is almost as if this is uh, amravati the city of indra however amidst all of this hanuman is seeing not a single trace of devotional sentiment hanuman is thinking how do i enter the city with, without being caught how do i find mother sita so uh, the acharyas have described that hanuman ati lagu roop dhar he has been described dhar means to uh, to accept he accepted a very small form like a mosquito or like a small fly and he entered lanka but while entering lanka also constantly he is chanting the holy name and remembering the supreme lord however when he enters it is described he meets lankini when he meets lankini and lankini stops him at that time hanuman has a discussion with lankini <clears throat> but before the discussion hanuman gives lankini uh, his mercy he slaps lankini on the face and lankini falls to the ground almost unconscious and then she tries to hold on to the ground and she wakes up so often times this can be seen as uh, something very negative in our life when the lankini in us gets slapped by a pure vishnu in the form of hanuman it is possible that we also fall unconscious because of shock how is it possible because often times we are almost thinking that we should be praised and we should be appreciated by great sadhus but here lankini is slapped on the face by hanuman so this shows us that pure vaishnavas they can shower their mercy whether in appreciation or whether in criticism it is only their mercy that they are spending that time with us we see in the damodar leela that manigreev and nalakuver they have been cursed by narad muni to become trees but is that actually a curse is this actually a curse actually no it's a benediction manigreev and nalakuver would have never got the chance to stay in one place in the garden of nanda maharaj and see krishna's past times with their own eyes but by becoming trees they were not just seeing the past times of krishna krishna was involving them in all his past times by hiding behind those trees by eating their fruits by sleeping under their shade and in this way narad muni's apparent curse was also a benediction so it's interesting narad muni he bound mani green nalakuvera as trees and krishna liberated mani green nalakuvera from being trees mother yashoda bound krishna to a wooden grinding mortar with a rope around his belly and nanda baba liberated krishna uh, by that binding so narad muni is binding mani green nalakuvera and krishna with the mortar is liberating mother yashoda is binding and nanda baba is liberating what does this show us whether it is binding us to being trees or binding us like mother yashoda to krishna on a wooden grinding mortar or liberating the trees or liberating the knot by nanda baba uh, it is only mercy that is coming a very beautiful past time has emanated and manifested through these extreme ex- uh, apparently extreme aspects of mercy so this is an important point whether it is slap of hanuman in the form of let's say a curse of narad muni or mani green dalakuvera or mother yashoda tying krishna or whether it is an embrace of hanuman in the form of krishna liberating the trees or 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 uh, or nanda baba liberating krishna from his binding we must understand whatever the sadhu does is only pure blessing after this hanuman uh, <clears throat> he has a discussion with lankini and lankini actually humbles herself offers her obeisances and tells hanuman 
that I am very very fortunate to meet you today because this has been the word of uh, Brahma that the day here <clears throat> the day uh, Lankini gets slapped by a monkey the the that day brings in auspiciousness because very soon Lanka will be destroyed and Ravana will be destroyed and Lankini will be free from her service to the feet of Ravana. So Lankini is seeing that as very auspicious sign and she folds her palms and she says, I am actually very, very fortunate with my eyes to see a dear associate of Sri Ram. She goes on to describe that there is nothing in heaven, nothing in the material world, uh, no form of happiness. All of, or in fact, all of them put together, which equals having one minute with a pure Vaishnava like yourself. Lankini tells uh, Hanuman, you are free to enter the city and in this way you can, uh, may you be successful in whatever you have done. But please remember, never forget the lotus feet of Sri Ram. Hanuman, <clears throat> he takes the lotus feet of Sri Ram in his heart and he starts traveling. And at that time, the Acharya is described by remembering the Supreme Lord in one's heart and by chanting the holy name of Ram, the, in, the unfavorable inconvenience can become favorable opportunities to serve. Garala Sudha Parivartanam, which means Garala means poison and Sudha means Amrita. Poisonous situations can become nectarian and enemies can become friends. The ocean of material existence can become like water held in the hoop print of a calf. Fire-like situations can become icy, can become pacified and cold. Uh, <clears throat> Garuda-like situations can become as insignificant as a small sparrow. Mountain-like situations can become insignificant like some dust. Um, and all of this can happen uh, just by remembering the mercy of Sri Ram in one's heart and chanting the holy name of Ram. So in this way, following that, that pattern, Hanuman serves continuously by remembering the Supreme Lord and chanting the holy name. Now it's described when Hanuman enters Lanka, he sees temples in all directions. Now it's an interesting point, the word Mandira has been used. But however, the house of Vibhishan has been called a Bhavan. It is not called Mandira. Why? Why is, why is everything else called Mandira but the house of Vibhishan called Bhavan? Because mandir is the place where there is worship. So what kind of mandir is this? It is not the temple of Sri Ram. In every house of Lanka, mandira means they are all worshipping a deity. And who is that deity? Senses of the body. They are busy serving the deity of their bodily senses. Their, their bodily senses have been considered as their Ishtadev. And they are all serving their senses in sense gratification like a devotee serves the Lord in the temple. So that this is why the, the word Mandira has been used. Also it has been described that <clears throat> Lakshmana used to serve Sita and Ram like a sense gratifier serves his senses which means constantly. So therefore here Mandira should not be taken as Hari Mandira because it has been very beautifully described that the houses of the Rakshasas are called Mandira, but the house of um, Vibhishan has been called as Bhavan. And in fact, outside his Bhavan, it has been described there was a Hari Mandir. Very specifically, the word Hari has been used. So, which means others were not worshipping Hari, they were worshipping the deity of their senses. This is why when Hanuman burns Lanka, all the Mandira gets burnt, but the Bhavana, the palace of Vibhishan's house remains intact. What does that represent? This shows that when we are busy serving the deity of our senses in the temple of our body, then what happens? Hanuman, who is an incarnation of Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva, as we know, is the Lord, is Mahakal. He is the Lord of annihilation. He is the destroying agent of the Guna Avatars. So, when we are busy sense gratifying and wasting uh, this whole human life in serving the deity of our senses, then time factor in the form of Hanuman will come and burn this temple down, which means our bodies will one day drop down dead and all this Ishtadev in the form of our senses will be burnt to ashes like Hanuman burnt Lanka. 
However, Vibhishan's Hari Mandir, Vibhishan's Bhavan Palace remained intact, which means anyone who serves Sri Hari, like Vibhishan, even Mahakal, destroying agent of time factor, cannot burn such a person's bhakti down. Which means whatever bhakti we perform, it is eternal. You see, Ramayana flows in a story, but there are significant lessons at every point. And this is the hitting point of the Ramayana. If we hear the story, it is ecstatically wonderful, very, very beautiful. But the, as we were previously mentioning, we don't take a medicine because of its taste. We take the medicine because of its potency and to make the potency of that medicine palatable, there is taste. So similarly, when there is bhakti like Vibhishan, then even time factor in the form of Hanuman cannot burn down that Shukriti. Neha bhikramana shosti pratyavayo na vidhyate swalpam apyasya dharmasya prayate mahato bhaya. It is an eternal thing in our heart. So now here is the interesting point where we can uh, we can bring in uh, our discussion. So, Lanka is Deha Nagar. It is the house, it is the city of Deha, where everyone is busy gratifying their Deha Nagar. And exactly opposite is Janakpuri, which is Videha Nagar. Videha Nagar is an interesting, so it's a very interesting contrast. Here, Lanka, everybody is busy satisfying, gratifying their body. Deha means body. They are busy gratifying their senses. Therefore, this is a city of sense gratification, Deha Nagar. However, Janakpuri, the city of Janak Maharaj, the, the city of Mother Sita, is not Deha Nagar, but Videha Nagar. He is Videha Raja. And therefore, Mother Sita is called Vai Dehi. What does Vai Dehi mean? Vai Dehi. Vai means without. Like Vai Kuntha. Kuntha means stress and Vai means without. So that place where there is no conception of stress is Vai Kuntha. Similarly, Vai Dehi, Mother Sita, is that personality or Videha Nagar is that place where there is no conception of material sense gratification. It is an interesting point that when Sri Ramachandra, he breaks the bow and is about to marry Mother Sita, there are messengers sent to Dasharat Maharaj with a letter. And when messengers are sent from Janakpuri and Dasharat Maharaj gets this letter, he asks the, 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 uh, the messengers. First question he asks them, how is Ram? How is my Ram do? To which the messengers are giggling and laughing. Why? Because generally we ask, how is this person doing? How is that person doing? When that person is a mere mortal. But when was the last time we asked, how is Narasimha Dev doing? We never ask the health of the Supreme Lord because we are convinced he is the Supreme Lord. So, here Dasharat Maharaj is asking, how is my Ram? Because he is speaking on the level of Prem, where he considers Ram to be his child. But here people coming from Videha Nagar, what does Videha mean? Vai means without and Deha means bodily conception. So, those who are liberated, from bodily conception, those who have no sense gratificatory spirit, they are residents of Videha, they are servants of Mother Sita as Vaidehi. Those who are liberated souls, those who have no conception of gratifying their senses, they are Vaidehi. So it's sometimes foolish when people say Mother Sita wanted the flesh of that golden deer or Mother Sita wanted the skin of that golden deer. It was not like this. She whose name is Vaidehi, she who has transcended the bodily conception, she who has nothing to do with this body, how can she be attracted by anybody? And how can Ram get attracted to anyone except a person who has overcome uh, the sense gratificatory spirit? So it's an interesting thing when Vaidehi, Mother Sita marries Sri Ram and no one else, Ekapatni Vrata, this means only a person who has conquered his senses will be accepted in marriage by the Supreme Lord. So when Dasharat Maharaj asks, how is my Ram doing? The messengers are giggling, saying, generally we ask how a jiva is doing, but we don't, we don't go and ask how God is doing. To which Dasharat Maharaj is asking the next question. How is it that you have this letter? Is it that you have seen him personally or somebody else has seen and sent this letter through you? Again, they are laughing. Why? Because Dasharat Maharaj is saying, did you see him? The messengers are saying, Ram is so beautiful after seeing him, there is nothing else left to see. So have you seen him? Yes. From the time we have seen him, we are only seeing him. 
we are even when we see other things we are remembering him so once who once we see the form of shri ram there is nothing else worth seeing in this world the third question that dasharath maharaj asked in this context that we are making is how does the city of videha know my son to which the messenger say it is only those who are videha only those who have transcended the gratificatory spirit of the senses only they can know your son and no one else so it's a such an interesting point that on one on one hand we have lanka which is deha nagar where everyone is having a temple of their body serving that ishta dev of their senses which is burnt with the uh, the effect of time as hanuman and on the other hand here it is videha nagar where the messengers are telling dasharath maharaj only someone who is vaidehi only someone who is videha raja dashar uh, janak maharaj someone who has transcended the needs of the body only they can know your son in truth so it is not the physical beauty that we are talking about it is the mentality of devotion if it was physical beauty that ram is attracted to then he would have married uh, surpanakha at dandakaranya now it is an interesting contrast if you see surpanakha the word surpanakha nakha actually means nails and surpa uh, literally means someone who has very long nails surpanakha means someone who has very long nails so what do the nails stand for in our life you see all our limbs all our senses we protect so that there is no cutting there is no destruction to our senses we want to make sure our hand is safe we want to make sure our fingers are safe you want to make sure mm, mm, the toe is safe you know we never stick it um, between the door you know because it hurts all the senses we want to protect from getting cut but the only part of our body apart from the hair which we want to cut time to time is the nail the nakha hmm? why the nakha has a very interesting significance we have nails on our 10 fingers now these 10 fingers represent the 10 senses that we have five knowledge acquiring and five working and there is a nail on top of them which means the nail represents material desires material desires are sitting on top of each of our senses and that is not wrong because to have material desires is the the state of a conditioned soul but the problem is when the nail overgrows the hand the finger when the nail is is lesser is smaller than the finger then there is no problem when material desires are small in size in compared to the ability of the senses then there is no issue we can dovetail it in krishna service but however the problem is when these nails grow over then there is dirt which accumulates under the nail and it must be cut from time to time so therefore when our material desires grow um, way more than the ability of our senses to grasp them so that is when dirt is accumulated in our uh, in uh, under the nail in in our uh, in our fingers and so this is what surpanaka represents someone who has unlimited material desires who can do anything to get her job done that person is actually very very ugly but may act to be very beautiful someone who has many many material desires so it's interesting surpanaka who comes with uh, with a very beautiful form is not just rejected but even her ears and nose are cut which means if we don't cut our nails on time not the i mean of course the nails of the body too but it's a it's a it's a, uh, uh, a very figurative thing a symbolic thing to say that when the nails of the growing nails of material desires are not trimmed from time to time then what happens we'll end up losing our ears and our nose which means ears and nose are the two uh, two um, senses on our face hmm, out of the five senses that we have which help us discriminate oh this is a stink and this is fragrance or this is harsh sound or this is soft music so discriminatory power is cut down we don't realize and surpanaka comes back and inst- instigates ravana to go and kidnap mother sita so ravana represents illusion and surpanaka she represents material desire so they mutually excite each other it's interesting when parvati gets description parvati gets described as the daughter of the of uh, of the mountainous regions she gets uh, she call, gets called as girija the daughter of giri 
she gets called as uh, bhavani the wife of lord shiva and she gets called as the mother of kartikeya and uh, ganesha similarly mother sita also gets description as the daughter of janak maharaj uh, and and as the wife of sri ram but however surpanakha is not described like that surpanakha is described as the sister of ravana why because ravana represents illusion and surpanakha represents material desires and they mutually excite each other which means when we have illusion we are under the spell of illusion our material desires increase and now when the material desires are satisfied our illusion continues so they mutually excite each other and they don't get accepted by ra so that is not the beauty we are talking about physical beauty is not the beauty we are talking about because when ram meets shabari who is an old uh, mataji devotee the word used is gajagamini which means oh she who walks like an intoxicated beautiful elephant now in what way can shabari physically walk like uh, an elephant it is not that which is not, it's not the physical walking that ram is talking about it is the height of the elephant in the form of the bhakti that shabari has and it is the desire to serve sri ram which makes one videha it is not the actual beauty of the body uh, that the supreme lord accepts so therefore we see the the, the contrast between the beauty of the heart the mentality of the heart of bhakti and <coughs> the beauty of the features of the body that is the contrast between deha uh, nagar of lanka and videha or vaidehi to uh, to transcend the inner spirit to enjoy so in this way hanuman he sees um, vibhishan and there is a very very beautiful discussion between the two and then offering obeisances to vibhishan later he asks for more details of mother sita vibhishan gives hanuman different plans to succeed as to how he can find mother sita <coughs> hanuman finally employs all of these principles taught by vibhishan and reaches ashok 1 or ashok vatika now here is a very depressing section but <coughs> for hanuman personally because he is seeing mother sita go through pangs of intense separation <coughs> but as we understand spiritually whether it is ramchandra's pastime with mother sita in separation or krishna's pastime from shrimati radharani in separation or chaitanya mahaprabhu's separation from vishnu priya devi in kali yuga treta dwapar and kali we find in separation there is greatest union heart to heart union when there is meeting there is only one beloved but when there is separation we see the beloved in all directions especially established in one's heart न विना विप्रलंभेन संभोगम पुष्टि मश्नुते which means without physical separation uh, union spirit of love cannot be nourished so hanuman here he enters ashok one he offers his obeisances and he is seeing there he is actually hanuman climbs on to the tree uh, and mysteriously sits there to observe the whole happening at ashok one now there is a meaning why hanuman gets on to the tree but of course i'll i'll explain that in a minute <clears throat> hanuman sits on top of the tree and he sees mother sita sit there and go through so many uh, um, prahar prahar means three hour periods so many three hour periods pass by and mother sita is simply crying and weeping in separation hanuman sees the form of mother sita uh, it is almost like her body has been burnt by some fire and her hair has become dreadlock and matted because of uh, not oiling properly and not taking care properly and she is in her heart remembering shri ram because hanuman is also remembering shri ram so she can so he can see the resonance in that remembrance and constantly her lips are moving because she is remembering the name of shri ram this is why very beautifully the name of ram has been described as brahmam bodhi samudbhavam kalimalam pradvam sanam chaavyam shrimat shambhu mukhendu sundara vare samshobhitam sarvada samsaramaya deshajam sukhakaram shri janaki jeevanam dhanyaste kritino pibanti satatam shri ram namamrita that this name of shri ram which is just like the ocean was churned and nectar came out the ocean of shastra when churned the nectar of ram nam comes out which destroys the effects of kali yuga which is always resonating on the lips of lord shiva which is the medicine to get out of this world which brings in supreme happiness and shri janaki jeevanam 
which is which was the life of mother sita while she was sitting in ashok vatika dhanyaste kritino pibanti satatam shri rama namamritam glorious and pious are those beings who are constantly chanting these two syllables so mother sita is constantly chanting and moving her lips and it has been described that mother sita her eyes were downwards which means she was her eyes were looking at her feet because she, she was so chaste and so shy and at the same time she was so cultured that she would not look into the eyes of any man she was always looking down so <clears throat> her her eyes were looking at her own feet and her heart was busy looking at the feet of shri ram and in this way in extreme suffering she was finding some some mm, some source of happiness looking at this situation hanuman became very very sad looking at mother sita cry and weep in separation like this <clears throat> now is the point where i was about to mention how hanuman he gets on to hide on that tree why does he hide on that tree because hanuman knows that mother sita has been cheated by her eyes once because a sadhu appeared in front of her and later became ravan so mother sita has lost faith in her eyes because she knows that if i see something even uh, pleasing to my eyes now it's possible that it could be another thing once bitten twice shy you know once we have uh, <clears throat> once we have been cheated <clears throat> in a certain aspect we are always careful in the future so hanuman being very sensitive to mother sita's uh, past he makes sure that he doesn't appear in front of mother sita directly so this is a this is a very nice lesson for preachers of krishna consciousness especially we should be very aware what the history of that person has been to whom we are preaching we must be very sensitive to their past like for example if one of their family members has uh, unfortunately died in a fire accident if we speak to them and say in the first meeting that actually uh, krishna drank the forest fire in vrindavan etc although this is the true story although this is uh, the right spirit of preaching still we are not being sensitive to that person's past because that person will not be able to resonate with this story so similarly hanuman he knows that he can appear in front of mother sita he can appear in front of mother sita's eyes but he prefers not to because she has been cheated once so now after sitting on top he sees how ravana comes there with many many women and he tries to uh, speak very harshly to mother sita uh, by trying to allure her and he tells mother sita that you please consider my point and uh, come very close to me i can make uh, all my wives headed by mandodari as your personal servant just look at me once and i can give you all that you want but mother sita very sharply she snaps at uh, in, a, in a very transcendental way at ravana to say that um, you are like a glowworm o oh ravana and i am like a lotus the lotus will never open in front of a glow worm the lotus always opens in front of the sun and you know who the sun is the sun is the surya vanshi ram so only in front of ram does the lotus of mother sita uh, open up completely and blossom and bloom you are like a glow worm at night this lanka is like darkness it's like night sky it is like andhakar it is tamasic and you are like a glow worm so you don't know the power of the sun this lotus opens only in front of the sun when ravana hears this he tells mother sita that you have actually offended me hmm? so now what i will do is i will take a sword and chop your head off and then we will see who protects you so he takes the sword uh, speaking um, very um, very arrogantly and at that time uh, fortunately mandodari she speaks neeti or ethics and she tells ravana that you should not act in this way mother sita doesn't stop mother sita starts glorifying ram by saying oh ravana you are so proud of your hand and your ability to move your arm and uh, your uh, the power in your sword but actually you haven't seen the arm of shri ram they are bluish black in complexion shyama varna and at the same time saroj it is like a lotus Hmm? the the arm is as long as a lotus garland it is in the color of a 
is a night blooming uh, bluish black lotus and it is very long like a lotus garland but please don't think this is with respect to the strength because lotus garland can be broken i am talking with respect to the beauty the strength of sri ram is like that of the trunk of an elephant it is very very thick and very very strong and very thick on the on the start and very thin tapering at the end sri ram's hand ajan ulambita bhujau arms are very very long and they are very broad his chest is also very broad and his arms are also very broad and they taper down like the very strong trunk of an elephant but they are as beautiful and as tender as um, a garland of blue uh, lotus dark blue lotus garland and then mother sita says that my uh, my neck or my shoulder has only one purpose to have this elephant trunk of sri ram's hand go around it but if that is not met then may your sword strike my neck and kill me right now because that neck which doesn't have the arm of sri ram around what is the use mother sita is teaching us this principle that our throat has only two purposes either one uh, we chant the holy name continuously or two we die to material existence but in brindavan we don't have do or die you see in the western world we have the saying do or die but in brindavan uh, the saying is die but still do <laughs> which means it's not that either the holy name of ram is on the tongue or ravana's sword no in brindavan the saying is even if ravana's sword is on the on the throat let it cut through but still chant the holy name <laughs> so mother sita is in that spirit she tells the sword in a very um, deep mood of separation from ram she tells the sword that o oh sword you seem to be very peaceful why don't you chop off my neck and take away this heat from my heart you seem to be sheetala very cold you seem to be very sharp why don't you use your cold nature to pacify the heat of my separation from sri ram why don't you use your sharp nature to separate me and finish this body once and for all it is better that i die than be in separation from sri ram so hanuman is sitting on the tree and listening to all this but ravana when convinced by mandodari ravana he, he tells uh, all his uh, main servants there in uh, ashok vatika that i am going to my palace but you should be here and you should torture this lady and convince her within a month to get back to me so all the rakshasis after ravana leaves they start uh, disturbing mother sita with uh, very bad forms evil forms ghostly forms and they make all these uh, stories cook up these stories to tell mother sita and to scare her uh, and they are singing all these uh, unbearable glories of ravana but at that time there is one rakshasi by the name trijata and three qualities of her have been described that she had very deep attachment to ram she was very expert in her service and she had the power of discrimination therefore mother sita kept her close to herself so this this is a very interesting point mother sita will keep us close to her lotus feet if we have these three qualities if we are attached to the lotus feet of ram if we are expert in our service and if we have the power of discrimination trijata comes there and tells all these rakshasi just back off don't trouble sita any more why because i had a dream last night and in the dream i saw monkeys coming into lanka and burning lanka down and destroying all the soldiers here and not just that i saw 10 headed ravana sitting completely naked on back of an elephant uh, on the back of a donkey with his hair completely shaven off and all her his hands being cut off to pieces so he's completely um insulted his hair has been shaved off his hands have been completely broken and khandita which means uh, cut to pieces and this ten headed ravana is sitting without clothes on back of a donkey and now the donkey is heading towards yamapuri which means hell <clears throat> and lanka is being given to vibhishan and ram is marching in with his soldiers and the uh, the monkeys are destroying everything and mother sita is being rescued by shri ram 
Sri Jata said, this is not just a dream that I had last night. This is going to become true very soon in a few days. Therefore, oh dear Rakshasis, I am telling you this with folded palms. Please take shelter of the lotus feet of Janaka Sutta, the daughter of uh, Janak Maharaj, which is Mother Sita. By taking shelter of Mother Sita, all inauspicious things can be uh, can be avoided. So this is a very wonderful lesson. That all inauspicious things in our life can be avoided and completely uh, deflected by taking shelter of the lotus feet of Mother Sita. So all the Rakshasis leave. They, they get scared. They, they uh, leave that place offering obeisances to Mother Sita. They don't take shelter. This is why Lanka was burnt. But they offer obeisances. At least because of that, they went alive. They offered obeisances and they left. And at that time, Mother Sita starts speaking to Trijata. She closes her eyes with tears in her eyes, streaming down her cheeks, wetting her throat. Mother Sita speaks to Trijata. Because Trijata took side with Mother Sita. So now Mother Sita is speaking to Trijata. She tells Trijata, you are the only person I have through all these problems. You are my only support. Now, I have one request from you. This body cannot bear any more heat of separation from Sri Ram. And I don't see Sri Ram coming here very soon. Please do something. Please burn my body. Anyway, it's burning, but it is slow burning. It's like a, 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 a you know, a, a mountain of dried hay that has been kept together and it's burning slowly from within. Why don't you uh, help me? And, and, and Trijata is not able to hear this. Mother Sita tells Trijata, please get in some wood, you know, prepare some, um, prepare some firewood and you can prepare me to place me on that wood so that that can be the chita, which means that can be the final funeral pyre. And in this way, you, you set my body on fire. I am telling you the truth, O, J o, o Trijata, uh, my life is such that I am not able to hear the coming of Ram, nor is my life ending. I am Jeevana Sandhi. <clears throat> I am at the doorstep of life and death. Neither am I living, nor am I dying. Uh, being away from Sri Ram, I am not able to live. And remembering Sri Ram, I am not able to die. So you please help me and, and try to burn my body down with this firewood. Trijata tries, tries to speak to Mother Sita and says, at this point, oh, Mother Sita, uh, I can tell you this is impossible for me to do because she's being little intelligent here. She's telling Mother Sita, according to Niti, you don't uh, set fire after sunset. So it is already sunset now. I cannot find any wood for now. So instead of saying no to Mother Sita, she's speaking like this. Just like we see so many times the Acharyas, uh, instead of saying no, they say, yes, I will. But let me finish a few rounds and then I will fulfill your desire. So, <coughs> Sri Jata, in that spirit, she says that, okay, okay, now after sunset, it's not good to light the fire. So, therefore, um, for now, what I can tell you is please remember the power potency of Ram. Remember the strength of Ram. Remember the fame of Ram. And please pacify yourself. Saying this, Sri Jata offers her obeisances and she goes home. But Mother Sita now starts looking through the sky and looking to the ground. Why? Because it is believed the sky is her father and Bhumi is her mother. And Mother Sita is in the middle. So she is calling out to her parents. And Mother Sita looks at the sky and she says, Seems like even destiny is going against me. Why? Because even fire is not found, even wood is not found. And when I have that desire, it is sunset. So neither is there fire and nor is my pain reducing um, and when she looks up, the sky is thundering and there is lightning. So Mother Sita is happy thinking that maybe the sky is going to give a strike of thundering and, and destroy her body. Mother Sita looks up, but interestingly, the, the sky is just thundering and lightning. Mother Sita starts crying that there is so much thunder and so much lightning in the sky, but not a single star falls onto me. Then she looks at the night moon and she says, why is the moon so lit? It is lit. Because it is also made out of fire. Hmm. Prabhupada also used to say this, that moon is also made out of fire, like the sun. But the, Prabhupada had an interesting um, phrase that Prabhu, Prabhosh Prabhu explains in
in the in the pastimes of Prabhupada. He says that Prabhupada said that the moon also has fire. It's made out of flames, but it is cooling flames. The sun is made out of blazing flames. Koti Chandra Sushitala. So very very soothing flames. So here, <coughs> Mother Sita is looking at the moon and saying, "Oh moon." You are also having flames in you. Why don't you throw those flames and burn my body? Why is it that my body is not burning? And then she is crying and saying, "Oh, maybe the moon and the thundering and the lightning—they are not helping me because I am separated from Ram. Who will support a person who is separated from Ram? That person is unfortunate. No one will support that person." Now Mother Sita looks at the Ashok tree under whom she is sitting, and she says, "Your name is Ashoka. Why don't you make me Ashoka? Make me free from suffering. Shoka means suffering and lamentation. Please make me free and throw some of your uh, leaves on me and give me your quality of being free. Either you give me my Ram or you kill me. Either way, you take my Shoka away." So at that time, some of the leaves of the tree they fall on the body of Mother Sita. But however, they are very tender, soft, green, very very soft leaves, as if the Ashoka tree, in the mood of the father, is embracing her child, uh, his child, Mother Sita. Mother Sita is now getting more restless that these soft leaves, hmm, they should become like fire and they should burn my body. But what to do? Unfortunately, nothing is helping me. And Hanuman is seeing all of this sitting on the tree and he is crying and weeping. How much love Mother Sita has for Ram? How is it that she is suffering so much? And at that time, Hanuman he decides to give the ring. But before he gives the ring, it is described that Hanuman starts singing the glory of Sri Ram. Why? Because the eyes can cheat us, but the ears will not cheat us. Our process is not to see Vrindavan. Our process is to hear about Vrindavan. Our process is not to see Krishna with our eyes. Our process is to see Krishna through our ears. Shruta Ikshanam. So, so Hanuman starts speaking Ram Katha, the glories of Ram, and first of all, he tries to pacify Mother Sita with this principle. He sings the glories of Ram profusely, and then when Mother Sita is listening, her suffering gets reduced. But at that time, Mother Sita says. that the person who the the katha that is being spoken and sung is so nectarian the person being described is so nectarian but why is it that the person who is narrating it is not coming in front of me at that time hanuman comes in front of mother sita and it's described he comes and sits uh, in in front of mother sita very close to mother sita at that time mother sita being very chaste she turns her face away hmm, and covers it with her cloak because she is astonished that it is in the form of a monkey she had not seen monkeys like this speaking ram katha so now she was thinking is this actually another trick of ravan at that time hanuman he chants the holy name and the glories of ram and he says oh mother please have complete faith that i am the servant of shri ram apart from this there is no other identity in my life please trust me and then Out of uh, uh, to, to show his identity, he offers the ring to Mother Sita. It is described he offers the ring by keeping his uh, keeping the ring in his palms in a cupped palm. The palms the are palm facing towards the sky. The palms are facing towards the sky, and the ring is placed in the in the, the cupped palms so that Mother Sita can pick from. it has been described by the acharyas that when we give something to our juniors we give it in the mood of giving but when we have to offer it to our superiors we place it in our palms and we give them the privilege of picking it instead of we giving and they accepting so hanuman offers the ring and mother sita cries looking at the ring there is a history of this ring actually the acharyas have commented that previously when sita and ram they got married initially after their marriage after a few days there was once a disagreement between both of them and for a day they did not speak to each other but at that time what happened during that uh, that time of not speaking to each other the finger ring of mother sita fell to the ground and when the finger ring of mother sita fell to the ground accidentally shri ram he he uh, bent to take that ring and he picked up that ring and gave it to mother sita and both of them smiled 
and the ice was broken and they started speaking so previously when there was separation emotional separation between sita and ram it was the ring of mother sita which got them together similarly sri ram is now giving the ring of ram saying now there is physical separation like we had then an emotional separation when there was an emotional separation of sita your ring got us together but now when there is physical separation my ring will get us together so the ring of uh, ramachandra is got and at that time mother sita is looking at the ring and thinking this ring can be got by this monkey only in one of these three cases one either this monkey has destroyed ram and taken the ring which is not possible because ram is ajaya he cannot be defeated second this ring is an illusory ring so that is also not possible because maya cannot create something that is divine or third only one possibility is left that ram may have given the ring to Uh, the monkey so therefore mother sita asks okay if you are the associate of sri ram please tell me how did nara and vanara meet how did all this happen so hanuman starts speaking the whole story and mother sita sees five aspects in hanuman's personality this is that he is speaking continuously he is speaking only ram katha before introducing himself he speaks about sri ram this is positive second he has proper etiquette why because hanuman as soon as he came in front of mother sita he became in the form of a little baby a baby monkey why because he was appearing like a child appears in front of the mother with folded arms three he had words which were very soft and well thought of and this is the quality of the devotee of sri ram fourth he was constantly in the mood of serving sri ram and mother sita and fifth he had nothing Uh, no, no sign on his body or in his speech of ego. Mother Sita asks Hanuman, "I am completely convinced that you are the messenger of Sri Ram. You appear to be like a ship for a drowning man in the ocean of suffering. You have come actually to help me." And Hanuman's body is trembling with happiness as he looks at Mother Sita. At the same time, looking at the suffering of Mother Sita, Mother Sita looks at Hanuman and says. please tell me please bless my life and tell me how is the uh, lord of my life is he happy with his brother lakshman why does mother sita ask about lakshman in the first go because the last scene that mother sita saw of, of ram and lakshman while she was being kidnapped is that she had caused inconvenience to lakshman and because of that uh, lakshman had to go into the forest and because lakshman went into the forest he may have been chastised by ram so in this spirit did they reconcile or are they still not talking to each other because i got kidnapped because of this mistake so she is asking is ram is ram is ram safe with his brother lakshman he is so soft hearted ram is so soft hearted how is he living alive in my separation he is the one who gives happiness to the whole world but look at this point where he himself who is the source of all happiness is crying in separation from me does he remember me oh hanuman are there times when that bluish black complexion of sri ram turns pale remembering me hanuman please tell me do, will my eyes ever become pacified will they become cold by looking at this beautiful form of ram hanuman why are you talking please open your mouth and talk and as at this point there are no words coming out of mother sita's voice and tears are coming from her eyes and at that time even hanuman he is having a lump of emotion on his in his throat and he is also offering uh, tears and he is not able to speak and mother sita says please don't tell me that ram has forgotten me by throwing me into this forest that ram has forgotten me i know he will not but please tell me that he remembers me by remembering him i am keeping my life together hanuman speaks mother you please be pacified hmm? uh, the the son of dasharath and the lord of uh, janaki is 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 proper <coughs> his health is okay and he has uh, his relation with lakshmana is also good Hanuman is very very cautious he is not saying that ram is very happy he is not saying ram is very sad because if he says ram is very happy mother sita will think oh how is he happy in my separation and by saying that he is very sad mother sita is going to become more sad when hanuman 
one thing is only one thing mother please understand in your heart that the love that you have for ram ram has twice that love for you what does this represent we are like mother sitas in the con- we, we are like conditioned souls Uh, like we, mother sita is representing a conditioned soul kept in the ashok vatika of this material existence by ravana who is maya shakti but hanuman is like guru who is sent by the supreme lord shri ram who comes and tells us whatever love you can have for the supreme lord shri ram ram loves you twice as much so oh jeeva please don't worry saying this hanuman offered obeisances and he tells uh, mother sita now you please be pacified and listen to what ram has to say ram has sent a message through me please kindly listen to this message and mother sita wipes her tears and she sits straight and she is anticipating what ram has written uh, the message that ram has written through hanuman hanuman is now speaking the heart of shri ram now it is ram shri ram watch ram is speaking ram tells mother sita oh shri oh sita how can i live without you in separation from you everything favorable has become unfavorable do you know that when i sit in uh, when i sit under ashoka trees and i beg the ashoka tree to burn my body down then it throws tender soft leaves but those leaves are so soft i wish they were sparks of fire that i could burn my body so the same emotion that mother sita is going through shri ram is writing in the message that i am going through the same emotion shri ram says that all night long when i am sitting in separation from you that night doesn't seem to end it is like the night of brahma what does that mean night is the time of darkness of uncertainty ho oh, sita ho oh, sita i don't know when this night will end hmm? even Uh, the moon which gives some light and soothing rays moon beams at night that moon also scorches me at night as if it is the sun the forest of lotus flowers looks like cactus to me and when i when the body is burning in so much fire of separation i stand under the clouds and the clouds start raining i may i think that may this rain pacify me but oh sita how can i tell you it's almost like the cloud is pouring down boiling oil on my body i am not able to live anymore everything that was favorable everything that was friendly has become unfavorable in my life oh sita when i feel suffocated in this heat and i go and stand in in front of cold breeze the breeze which has three characteristics of being cold of being fragrant and of being very slow and breezy hmm? this vayu seems to be like the breathing in and breathing out of the poisonous snake it is as if hot fumes are touching my body hey sita this suffering is only increasing day by day by day and whom should i speak all this to there is only one person in this world whom i can speak all this to and that is you and the suffering has come because of separation from you there is no one i can speak this to hey sita the only thing i can do is in my mind constantly think of you but oh sita what can i say that mind of mine is also with you i cannot pacify myself in this suffering i cannot speak out to anyone except you and that you are away and in your separation i am dying and the only way to pacify is to think of you but that mind is also with you you please tell me where can i go what can i do and in this way prabhu ram is not able to complete the letter listening to this mother sita she swoons in moods of separation at that time hanuman tells mother sita please hold your heart please hold your life air together in this body very soon ram will come after every night there is a sunrise there is a sunrise so every night of uh, darkness of lanka uh, this this night of darkness of tamasic lanka will end very soon and uh, <clears throat> he who is uh, bhanukula shiromani he who is the most uh, uh, the, the 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 crown the crest jewel in the surya vanshi he will the sun of his glory will rise very soon please keep your life air together oh mother i promise you lanka and all this ravana and his associates are like insects and ram is like fire just like the insect becomes very very excited to enter fire and die similarly the fire of ram will come very soon like a forest fire and all these insects 
will jump into uh, this fire and they will die oh mother very soon you see all the, the monkeys will come and they will tear the flanka to pieces and they will break the heart of the dravan by killing all his associates and his troops oh mother with folded palms i beg you if possible i would have taken you on my back and i would have jumped across back to sri ram i would lovingly serve this but oh mother there are a few reasons why i can't do this a few reasons why i can't do this first reason i will not do this because sri ram has not instructed me to do this second i will not do this oh mother because i know in your heart of hearts you will be happy when ram comes and rescues you so that the glory of ram is kept intact and three oh mother i know you are not selfish to be free from lanka you are always thinking of other captives in lanka who are also like sita you want sri ram to come and liberate everybody and then rescue you knowing this oh mother i can just tell you please hold your heart together very soon all these demons will be finished and narada will come playing his veena glorifying sri ram all the monkeys will tear everything to pieces please have faith and that time mother sita looks at this baby monkey and she tells but all these monkeys will be very small and sweet and cute like you but these soldiers of ravana are very very strong how do you think you can challenge them at that time hanuman says oh mother please have faith in me if you want a proof i will show you and then hanuman becomes very big it's like uh, kanaka bhudarakara which means his form was like a golden humongous big golden mountain so when hanuman had to do his service he is so humble but when he wants to restore faith in mother sita he becomes a mountain we are exact opposite we show up like we are mountains but when it comes to serving then we become baby monkeys but hanuman is showing to be a humble in front of the superior and when they are asking for proof to become like a golden mountain he tells mother sita looking at this form every troop of ravana will be cut to pieces they will be destroyed oh mother you don't worry mother sita has a smile looking at hanuman immediately hanuman becomes very small offers obeisances and now immediately he tells mother sita oh mother sita the form that you have seen is not mine it is actually the potency of shri ram i am a monkey i am a monkey who eats fruits and roots and leaves and flowers i have no strength न जन्म नून महता न सौभगम न वाक न बुद्धि न कृति तो रहे तो आई हैव नो बुद्धि आई हैव नो वोकल एबिलिटी आई हैव नो ब्यूटी आई हैव नथिंग ओ मदर व्हाट एवर यू आर सीइंग इज एक्चुअली द द पोटेंसी ऑफ श्री राम जस्ट लाइक गरुड़ कैन एक्चुअली ईट अप स्नेक्स वेरी इजीली बट इफ दैट स्नेक is sitting on the neck of lord shiva garuda cannot eat in fact the snake can hiss and shoo garuda away similarly oh mother i am like a small snake and ravana is like garuda he can eat me but because i am on the just like the snake is on the throat of lord shiva similarly i i am at the feet of ram therefore i have this power sthana pradanam na tu bala pradanam it is not my potency but it is the power of the position where i am sitting at <laughs> mother sita became very very happy looking at the words and the maturity of this devotee she looks at uh, hanuman and she says that in your speech i see devotion i see empowerment i see ecstatic influence that you can create and i see insurmountable strength oh dear child like a mother blesses the baby i will bless you that may you become more and more powerful bala and shila may you have excellent character ajar may you always remain young amar may you always be a chiranjeevi may you never die guna nidhi may you be a source of all good qualities may all of this come to you and hanuman is still looking with tears waiting for the actual benediction mother sita sees that hanuman is so genuine that he is not happy receiving any of this then finally mother sita tells hanuman 
may you become as dear to Sri Ram's heart as much as I am dear to Sri Ram's heart. And Hanuman jumps in ecstasy because this is the benediction a pure devotee wants. May I become very dear to my spiritual master. May I become very dear to the heart of the parampara. May I become very dear to the heart of Sri Ram. Hanuman becomes very, very happy. He offers obeisances to the lotus feet of Mother Sita again and again. Again and again with tears he is offering obeisances and with voice he is telling Mother Sita, I have become, my life has become worth living. After seeing you die in separation, I wanted to die because I, what, what will I go and tell Ram? I cannot lie to him. I cannot speak the truth to him. But now by this blessing, I can tell him the whole story and that pacifies and keeps me alive. Oh Mother, this benediction of yours has kept me alive in this body. Mother, I offer my obeisances to you. May your blessings always be on me and may you empower me to do the needful. But as Mother Sita is happily empowering uh, Hanuman with this blessing, Hanuman immediately becomes like a child, very, very innocent child in front of, child in the sense he is always in the form of a baby. But now like a baby depends on the mother, Hanuman tells Mother Sita that, Mother, I want to tell you something very honestly. I have jumped through the ocean and faced all these difficulties and fought uh, some demons here. And and I'm, I've been sitting here observing you for quite some time. I couldn't have eaten anything without doing service to Sri Ram. But now, if you may so allow me, if you are happy with my presence, I am feeling very, very uh, hungry and thirsty. Will you give me the benediction that I can eat some fruits here. I see some nice fruits here in Ashokwan. I see nice flowers and very nice tempting big fruits. Can you please allow me to eat them? I am very very hungry mother. Just like a child goes to the mother and says, please feed me. So here Hanuman is saying and mother Sita says, oh I am very scared because there are so many different uh, soldiers here. They are guarding these trees. So I am scared for you, oh child. Hanuman says, my lord or my mother I am not scared. They should be scared of me. <laughs> but as far as hunger is concerned, I am not able to stop. Only if you give your permission, will I go and jump and eat a few fruits. If you say no, I will not. Mother Sita blesses Hanuman and says, Mother Janaki blesses Hanuman and says, please hold the feet of Sri Ram in your heart and eat very sweet fruits in this, in, in this forest. What does this represent? <clears throat> this represents that Mother Sita is telling us, whatever you want to eat, always eat those sweet fruits by keeping Sri Ram in your heart. Which means offer the fruits. Whatever we want to eat, we offer it to Sri Ram first. Remember the lotus feet of Sri Ram and then you eat. So Hanuman starts doing that. And it's interesting that uh, the story continues mm, very beautifully ahead. How uh, Hanuman starts eating up all these fruits and uprooting trees and by then all the soldiers come there and they start fighting and Hanuman is literally crushing them. Some of them he's jumping on top and breaking their heads and pulling their arms and it's, it's a total gymnastic act there. And they go running to Ravana saying that there is a monkey who is creating so much nuisance in our forest. And Ravana says just take a few soldiers and get you know this monkey killed. And then he sends few more and they are also killed. And rest are coming back and telling Ravana nothing is working. Now, <clears throat> Ravan sends uh, Akshay Kumar. Mm. He sends his son. And then um, Hanuman mysteriously lifts up a whole tree. And roaring towards the whole uh, army, the whole group, he charges. He throws um, tree after tree. And he kills many of them. Some are crushed, some are killed, some are powdered to dust. And in this way, the dear monkey servant of, of Sri Ram is, is showing, is, is doing some exercise, a warm up before the actual. When Lankapati Ravana gets to know that his son <coughs> is killed, Akshay Kumar got killed, he sends Meghna and he tells Meghna, don't kill this monkey, tie him up and bring him to me. I will do the needful, don't kill him. And Indrajit goes there. And, and it's a long discussion, but he goes there and looking at with his troop and Hanuman charges and shouts and ra ra runs and there's war cries. He uproots trees after trees and he throws and breaks the chariot of uh, of uh, Meghnath or Indrajit. And Indrajit falls off the chariot and 
Hanuman is throwing more and more trees and other uh, soldiers are killed and it's, it's a total punching and kicking act. In fact, in, in Thai boxing, there is a kick called Hanuman kick. So Hanuman was using all those kicks and many of them were painting. When Meghnath and Hanuman were fighting, it was almost like two elephants, you know, going head to head, hitting each other, uh, one after another. But what to do? <clears throat> At this point, um, by the inconceivable desire of Hanuman, Meghnath shoots a Brahmastra and ties Hanuman to bring him to Ravana. And, and at this point, we must know that it's not that any, any Brahmastra can tie Hanuman because the name of Ram can break Bhava Sansara, Bhava Pash. The bondage of material existence can be broken by chanting the names of Ram. How can the servant of Ram be bound by some Brahmastra of this world? Impossible. But the only reason why Hanuman was bound is because he wanted to see Ravana face to face. That Ravana who had the audacity to uh, kidnap Mother Sita, who has the audacity to fight Ram. So Hanuman agrees to be bound. So this shows how devotees, pure devotees, sometimes they may go through health crisis, they may go through financial crisis, they may go through different problems like Prabhupada facing heart attacks or, or our spiritual masters having some, uh, some illness. But that doesn't mean it is an act of karma. It is the inconceivable sweet will of the Supreme Lord which they take on their head to show the world how service must go on irrespective of whatever the circumstance may be. Also at the same time, Hanuman is teaching us the lesson. If you enter the Ashok Vatika of this material world, and if you become greedy to eat the fruits for your personal enjoyment, very soon you will be bound up by the laws of this material world. So in this way, Hanuman is got in front of Ravana and there is a very wonderful discussion between Hanuman and Ravana where Hanuman tries, uh, where Ravana tries to belittle uh, Hanuman and tries to put him down and laugh at him and, and, and insult him in public. But Hanuman, but Hanuman still speaks the truth. And, and, and tries to give instructions to Ravana, telling him, waking up to the truth. And it's interesting that even after Hanuman's uh, advice to Ravana, Ravana does not learn a lesson. Upadeshohi murkhanam prakopayana shantaye payapana bujanganam kevanam lishavarthana. When you feed milk and some leaves to a snake, thinking that it will get nourished, the snake... Uh, prefers to nourish its poison instead. So Ravana, like a snake, he gets more and more angry as Hanuman instructs him. Hanuman tells uh, Ravana to surrender to Sri Ram and return Mother Sita. And in this way, uh, Ram will accept uh, Ravana. Hanuman even tells Ravana that you don't have to worry. You can continue to be the king of Lanka. You don't have to give it up and become like us. We are forest dwellers, but you can live in Lanka if that is what you fear. But just accept Sri Ram as your friend. Who is Ram? Hanuman says, it is he by whose illusory energy uh, Maya Shakti creates this Brahmanda. Ram is he from whose uh, strength uh, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they actually perform the functions of creation, maintenance and destruction. Who is Ram? By the power of whom Ananta Shesh with his thousand hoods holds the universes on the head. Who is Ram? It is by the strength of that Ram. Different forms of demigods are protecting dharma. And <clears throat> it, is, it is that Ram who, um, <clears throat> by whose power Rakshasas are destroyed and demigods are protected. Just like Ram destroys the bow of Lord Shiva, he destroys a dharma. He uh, destroys so many demons by his inconceivable small atomic strength. And Ravana, please understand, by his inconceivably small, insignificant strength particles, all of these things are happening. But you have the audacity to challenge him in his full potency and in fact kidnap his eternal consort. I am bowing down to you, O Ravana, and for your own good I am telling you, Hold the feet of Ram in your in your heart and, and return Mother Sita. If you don't have worry for yourself, at least think of your past. 
because Lord Vishnu's son is Brahma, Brahma's son is Kolastha, Kolastha's son is Vishravas, and his son is Ravana. So Ravana, five generations about, comes to Sri Narayana. So Hanuman tells him, if you don't think of your own future, at least think of the character of your predecessors. Think of Paulastya Muni, think of Vishravas, your father, think of Brahma. They are all like moons. Don't become a black spot in their personality. You can continue to live like the king of Lanka, but please kindly return Mother Sita. You are at the moment very, very glorious and very opulent. You are like a pond which is filled up by the rainwater of your past karma. But think, this rainwater, uh, this cloud rain will stop very soon and there will be summer and all your water will dry. Which means, oh king, very soon your past karmic fuel will end and all of this will burn down to ashes and you will be kicked out of your position. Instead, learn to collect water through the base. If they pond uh, can learn to collect water from Mother Earth, it will always be full, even in summer. So, you be like a pond, but don't depend so much on the cloud rainwater of your past karma, because when that stops and there is summer time, you will dry up and you will die. But instead, learn to take extract water from Mother Earth in the form of Ram Bhakti. So, in that way, you can continue to remain always full in opulence, because you have tapped the base quality of surrendering to Sri Ram. So in this way, of course, Hanuman gives very, very beautiful advice, but that will be the topic of our discussion sometime later. Now, since it's about two hours of our discussion and it's a very, very holy day, I thought of going over time and discussing this section so that we can pray to Mother Sita that we can also develop some aspect of that mood of separation from Sri Ram, from Mother Sita, we can develop the mood of surrender of Hanuman so that we can assist the Lord in this world by jumping across oceanic projects and serving as many jivas as possible by uniting them to Ram. And at the same time, by doing this, we can instruct the Ravana of our senses, the Ravana of our mind with the instructions that Hanuman has given Ravana. So similarly, by holding the lotus feet of Ram in the core of our heart, by chanting the name of Ram on the tip of our tongue, may we all get empowered following the footsteps of Hanuman to please Mother Sita by uniting her back to Ram. We really want to thank Valmiki Muni for giving us such a, a great work which is worshipable, which has innumerable lessons very similar to that of the Bhagavatam or the Bhagavad Gita, but in a very, very beautiful storyline. We want to offer our obeisances to all the Acharyas who have given their commentaries um, in different versions of the Ramayana also and also different Sri Vaishnava Acharyas who have commented on the Valmiki Ramayana uh, and in this way they have given us so many beautiful meanings and flavors to the storyline that we are aware of. Last but not the least, all of this would have been impossible without the very beautiful philosophical presentation of Srila Prabhupada in his books because first we came in touch with Prabhupada and through Prabhupada's books and learning the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Now when we dwell into these stories, we can derive so much bliss by having philosophical uh, application in our life. So we want to offer our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. And last but not the least, I want to offer my obeisances to all the devotees on the call. Please forgive me for going over time, but I just took the liberty because today is a very auspicious day. So it is very nice that we hear and chant together, especially during this lockdown where we don't have to go out anywhere, we can. We are all working from home. I pass on the call back to the organizers of this call. Thank you so much for kindly engaging me in this service. Today is also uh, a very uh, auspicious day with respect to Madhupandit Goswami and Janava Mata. But of course, His Grace Adhikaradar Prabhu will be speaking about their glories uh, in the mid-morning call. So I would like to end here and... Uh, offer my obeisances to all the devotees by giving the call back to the organizers. Thank you so much for very, very beautiful class. Uh, do you have time for questions, Prabhuji? Yes, I have a few questions. Uh, 
Yes, Mataji, maybe uh, one or two questions, not more, because we have already gone way over time. Yes, Prabhuji. So, thank you very much. Anybody has any question for Prabhuji, they can ask. Yes, Prabhuji, what a wonderful class, a brilliant class as usual, Prabhu. Thanks so much. We are very fortunate to hear from you. One quick question, Prabhu, I've always wondered about one question, about the significance of Mother Sita going back to inside the earth, towards the end of uh, Valmiki Ramayan uh, that we see that when Mother Sita had to was to ask why Lord Ram to prove herself once again, so she asked uh, the the Mother Earth to open up so she could go underneath and um, and remain there. What is the significance of that? If you could please explain. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Actually, there are many many reasons for this, and 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 not just during the the, um, towards the end, that as you mentioned, there have been many, many descriptions of Mother Sita and Mother Earth interacting back and forth because Mother Earth is the mother of Mother Sita. So yesterday only we were discussing at home, there is another very beautiful insight that the Acharyas draw uh, previously also when, <clears throat> when Mother Sita tells Lakshmana that you should go and, and protect uh, Sri Ram when especially the golden deer episode. <clears throat> so Lakshmana tells Mother Sita that you don't worry. Despite chanting the name of Ram, innumerable problems are overcome. So that Ram doesn't have any problem. Oh Mother, please be pacified. So Mother uh, Sita tells Lakshmana, no, I want you to go. Lakshmana said, but my Lord Sri Ram has told me to be here. And Mother Sita said, you don't listen to him. You listen to me and you go. Hmm? So, <coughs> so Lakshmana, he had taken this breath that if anyone <coughs> tells me not to listen to Sri Ram, I will take my arrow and chop that person down to pieces. So he removed his arrow because he had taken a breath as a, as a Kshatriya that he will kill anyone who tells him not to listen to Ram. But at the same time, he was thinking, I cannot do this against Mother Sita. <laughs> so do I keep my word? And, and, and kill her or do I protect her and, and, you know, forget my promise. So what do I do? So at that time, Mother Earth appears to the scene. It's described, Mother Earth appeared in a form and she, with folded hands, she told um, Lakshmana that uh, I am the mother of Sita and it is described whatever harm you cause uh, to the mother, that harm is to the daughter. You don't have to cause any harm to the daughter by... Uh, by attacking the mother, you're actually attacking the daughter emotionally. So therefore, whatever you have to do, you do it to me. And then she becomes back to powder, you know, Mother Earth. So Lakshmana, who has taken that uh, that arrow in his hand, he cannot put the arrow back into his quiver because that's not Kshatriya spirit. So what he does is he uses that arrow tip to to actually make the Lakshman Rekha. Now the Lakshman Rekha is not found in the Valmiki Ramayana, it is found in the Tulsi Ramayana. And of course, commentators on the Tulsi Ramayana give the story that the tip of the arrow uh, was used to draw the line to protect Mother Sita in the Laksh with the Lakshman Rekha. Why? Because by drawing, by using the arrow on the earth, it is as if he has used the arrow to kill Mother Earth. Mm? He has by by scratching. Uh, he is doing two things. He is protecting Mother Sita with that armor. And at the same time, he's using that arrow by attacking Mother Earth because he's scratching her surface with the tip of the arrow. So in this way, we see here Lakshmana kept his word of using the arrow, yet at the same time protected Mother Sita and then followed her instruction to go there and got chastised by Ram even. So here also Mother Earth has appeared in the scene. And this has happened many times according to the Acharyas. Whenever Mother Sita, even at the Ashokvatika, when Mother Sita is alone, Mother Earth comes and pacifies her that it's only, uh, you know, a matter of time that very soon uh, Sri Ram will come. So Mother Earth represents many things. Mother Earth represents, first of all, uh, she represents, she, one of the names of Mother Earth is Kshama Devi, which means she is the embodiment of tolerance. She is the embodiment of forbearance because everyone lives on her back and we literally walk uh, on the back of Mother Earth and there is exploitation. We, we 
there is so much uh, exploitation of mother earth especially in mining uh, <coughs> to dig and get the natural oil etc so there's so much happening but still mother earth is tolerating all of that so earth represents tolerance as kshama devi earth represents the storehouse of taste because all the tasty fruits come from mother earth uh, the crops come from mother earth the fruits and flowers come from mother earth and she is unending everlasting from time immemorial all the crops have been growing for mother earth so therefore she is also called rasa devi mother earth is the the emblem of maintenance she is the emblem of tolerance and compassion she is the embodiment of adding taste in one's life so therefore when finally she accepts mother sita it is as if oh dear daughter after going through the whole past time you have completely inherited all the qualities of the mother as the daughter inherits you have stepped onto my shoes and therefore i embrace you and welcome you to this family of tolerance when i see you burning in separation from sri shri ram and still having the juice of devotion in your heart and tolerating and patiently waiting through all of this i accept you in my embrace for walking through this path and living this life as good as your mother that is mother earth so it's like the mother accepting the daughter in her fold because the daughter has successfully lived a life proving that she is the daughter of mother earth so it is like the symbol of acceptance however there are many many reasons given by the acharyas that i myself i have read and apart from that there are many reasons that i have not read and i am not aware of but this is one very interesting reason in the time span that we have that i remember so i'm i'm just trying to humbly share hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji thank you very much hari ko hari krishna prabhu ji the note pranams wonderful wonderful class so many uh, realizations in each and every um, aspect of this beautiful history of ramayana you have given us we are very very thankful to you for uh, such practical uh execution of uh, these things how to you know remember these things and practice so my question is are these your recitations or are they mentioned by any acharyas for example yes like master ji yeah. actually master ji there have been many acharyas who have given their commentaries so some commentaries are in sanskrit to the original valmiki ramayana so some points are derived from there while at the same time some of these points are from the parallel readings of other ramayana and commentaries on those ramayana so like for example there have been many uh, souls uh, many great vaishnava acharyas from the ramanandi sampradaya who worship sita and ram as their ishtadev as the lord of their life and they have many great acharyas in that line they have commented on on the parallel readings like for example just like we have sanskrit commentaries to the valmiki ramayana we have also commentaries to the tulsi ramayana we have commentaries to the other regional uh, um, ramayans which are all ultimately depending on the valmiki ramayana so i have uh, you know just put together of course valmiki ramayana is the backbone but we have uh, principal past times and, and and details coming from all the different uh, ramayans and at the same time the commentaries to the ramayana ultimately all in line with the prabhupada philosophy so none of them are my they are all inherited they are all simply a compilation but because they are very very pleasing to the heart they are very very soothing uh, you know to our <laughs> stay existential stay in this material world and they are very much in line with our gaudi vaishnava philosophy by prabhupad therefore they can be accepted and incorporated but none of them are mine they are they are all simply they uchishtha they are all the remnants of the plate of great souls and i am simply doing the work of putting all the remnants of all great souls and pure devotees in one plate and and we are all eating from the same plate so i didn't cook them i didn't eat them I, which means i have not uh, completely digested all of this but i am simply just happy that pure devotees pure acharyas in the form of commentators have left their remnants so that we all can feast from them and taste and and get rejuvenated on spiritual on the path of spiritual life beautiful prabhu ji that is your glory uh, it's a glorious presentation to be able to uh, see into what uh, commentators and acharyas are telling one who that level can do that and take that and give it to us uh, that you know it would take lifetime for us to assimilate it 
we are very 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 grateful and my humble obeisances to you for this unparalleled association thank you so much hare krishna mata ji all these words that you have offered i offer it at the lotus feet of my spiritual master at the lotus feet of all my shiksha gurus it is the culture that prabhupada has taught us all of prabhupada's classes are always with quotations prabhupada always makes all the points with sanskrit verses uh, with references uh, so so the aspect of taking it from our superiors and presenting it for everybody's benefit is the culture of hari katha that prabhupada and our spiritual masters have taught us so i am um, just trying to follow so i i really pass on the words of appreciation to them but at the same time if you can kindly pray for me and bless me those prayers and blessings i can keep in my life but the appreciation i will pass it on to them because it is their hard work so having said this i want to offer the call back to the the uh, organizer because we are little over time we have a mid, i think mid morning call starting in an hour so i think uh, we will we will pause it for now and i encourage all the devotees if possible please kindly attend the mid morning uh, call uh, by his grace adi gadar prabhu he will be speaking on uh, the life of mother janava uh, the peter concert of nityananda prabhu so it's so wonderful that sri ram's concert is mother sita and nityananda prabhu's concert is janava ma and in this way uh, today we are celebrating these tithis so thank you so much everyone vansha kalpata rubhyas kripa sindhu bhya eva cha parikana pravatiyo vaitiyo me nanta koti vrasha vrutti ki jai shila prabhu pad ki jai his grace amarendra prabhu ki jai thank you very much it is no longer being recorded thank you so much prabhu hari krishna thank you so much prabhu ji hari krishna